friends, welcome back to my channel Swati Verma Styles. How have you guys been? I would like to tell my YouTube family that we as a couple moved to Canada on a permanent residency and uh, ever since we moved here so we got we started getting a lot of requests from our friends and you know known people on what is the procedure how to apply for it what is the time frame that is there and and the major question of how to crack the IELTS exam and what is the ideal score that you need to aim for in this video I'm going to tell you everything about cracking the IELTS exam and this is going to be a long video so you can just grab that tub of popcorn or your favorite coffee and just go through this video if you're new to my channel welcome to Swati Verma styles uh, do like this video and share this video if you like it and do subscribe to my channel Swati Verma styles and hit the bell icon so that you get updated with all the latest trends I share content on health beauty and lifestyle and in this video on IELTS that I'm going to share with you, I'm going to tell you certain tips and tricks of the IELTS exam. Also, when you talk about the IELTS exam for PR, we all know and aim for that golden score. So yes, I'm going to help you achieve that. And in this video, I'm going to share with you all the tips and tricks that you need to aim for that golden score. Also, how you should start preparing and what are the material that you can look for for your preparation and I'm also going to share my own mistakes in the end so that you don't do it and you can aim for a perfect score. Now let's come to why you should listen to me on IELTS score. I'll tell you because I did achieve that golden score at one go. So this is my IELTS scorecard. I'm going to share hide the candidate number and uh, so that's my name Swati Pasi. So that's my name after marriage and uh, this is my score if you can see. So I did get 8.5 in listening, uh, 7 in reading, 7 again in writing and 7.5 in speaking and overall score was 7.5. So this is that golden score. Also when, when I told you about uh, the mistakes that I did, the major mistake that I did was in the reading section and that is why my score dipped a little but still I did get the golden score. So I'm going to talk about all this. Also, I want to share with you one very small news that uh, when I was in India and uh, we were applying for our PR, so simultaneously I got through a job at the British Council in the IELTS exam division as a marketing manager. And that was like my dream job. Uh, but fortunately, unfortunately, the day, you know, just a few days after that, we got a Canada PR. <laughs> so that was such a tricky decision between, uh, you know, to choose from. But still, we, we of course chose uh, the Canada PR for a better lifestyle. And uh, yeah, I just thought to share it with you. So now let's quickly move into the video. Now, when we talk about the IELTS exam, so this is basically your English eligibility test and it is conducted in two divisions one is academic and one is general training if you're looking for study visa at certain countries then you need to give the academic version but in this video I am going to talk about the general training test which is required for PR purposes so of course for Canada PR you need to give the IELTS in general test division now talking about the general test uh, division of IELTS exam what is the format of the exam? The test is divided into four parts, which is reading, listening, writing, and speaking. And reading, writing, and listening happen on one day, and the speaking part happens at a at a at a different date. So now, firstly, let's talk about the reading, listening, and writing exam. So these three exams, in total, the time that you get is two hour forty five minutes, and they happen on the same day. So so now, as we move through the video, I'm going to pick the I'm going to pick the section which has the maximum scoring capability. So for example, you can see I scored 8.5 in listening test out of 9. So I think only one or two questions were wrong. So this is the area, this is the, uh, this is the section where you can score maximum. And I'm going to tell you a lot about this exam now. So when you talk about the listening section, time limit for this is 30 plus 10 minutes. Now why I say 30 plus 10 minutes? Because 30 minutes is the time that you're given to kind of go through the questions and listen to the recordings and write your answers on a rough sheet whereas 10 minutes is the time when you have to kind of write your answers from the rough sheet to the final paper. What is the listening test all about? Listen, in the listening test for half an hour you will be given four recordings and those four recordings will be of native English speakers. For example, the accent will be American, 
uh, it can be British, it can be Australian, it can be from New Zealand, it can be Canadian. So these are the uh, accents that would, would be used that would be used in those four recordings. And all the four four recordings will have ten questions each. The first recording will be where two people will be talking about day-to-day -day affairs. Number second recording will be will be a monologue, uh, like a local speech, like maybe a politician giving a speech to to the community. The third recording will be where there are there is a group of people, like let's say four people, in an in an organization. They can be employees and their trainer or they can be in a university where there are three students and one teacher and the last will be again a monologue that will be more like a university lecture so now these are the four parts so what happens in the listening test is you will be given uh, headphones and before the actual test you will be allowed to test that okay sound quality and everything is fine so once you check the sound quality and everything so what happens is a recording will be played wherein uh, you know let's say two people are talking and there will be a question paper where you'll have certain questions which are written in the sequence of the recording for example let's say in the recording you hear that two people are talking about let's say a university like what is the best university in Canada so let's say one person is saying uh, speaking to Kathy is this the right time to talk to you now Kathy says yeah this is Kathy speaking from let's say University Canada West how are you doing today and the question can be simultaneously the question that can be written is what is the university name that the person is calling so the answer will be university canada west so this is the way you need to pick the answers from the recording and you need to write keep on writing the answers in rough and then you know kind of uh, move on and the questions can be multiple choice there can be a flow chart they can be be a map they can be a diagram they can be a sentence completion so you need to be op you see your mind need to be open and you need to just kind of focus on the recording and leave everything else now let's come to the tips and tricks for listening exam and how you can crack a great score in it number one tip which is the most important is that you need to multitask and what I mean when I say multitask is that when you are hearing first of all when you're hearing the recording you should be able to skim the questions that what are the questions okay one question they are asking the number one question they are asking the name one question they are asking the timing one question they are asking the something in in in, uh, in dollars so you need to keep that thing in mind at the back of your hand at the back of at the back of your head and keep on listening to the recording and then simultaneously keep on answering the question now what happens majorly is that maybe you kind of skip some question or you could not understand the accent and the major tip is don't get stuck on that question because this way you will lose all the questions which are which are uh, further lined up in that recording so if you think you don't know if you didn't understand just make a guess because there's no negative marking just make a guess and hop on to the next question so that at least you get the rest of the questions right also before you answer the questions uh, you need to check very very carefully the, it will be written you know uh, at the top that answer the following questions in one word and or a number or it can be written answer the question below questions only in one word also it will be answer not in no more than two words so you have to keep that thing in mind also spellings are so important even singular or plural for example if the answer for something is let's say um, you know if, is let's say fan and you write fans like you, you write the plural form of it, you will get a zero for that. So you need to be very, very cautious of the grammar that you are using, of the spellings that you are using. Even if your answer is right, but you have spelled it wrong, it's, it's wrong. I will share certain tips on how words and numbers are calculated. For example, if the question says that you have to answer the below questions in one number. So when you talk about and, and the question says which year was this company started and the answer is let's say 1950. So 1950 is one number. These are not four numbers. This is one number. Similarly, if the question says you have to answer in one word. So in that case, when you talk about part time and the answer to a particular question, let's say what kind of job this is. And the answer is, let's say part time, part hyphen time. So this is one word. These are not two words. The biggest mistake that everybody does is, for example, uh, let's say the question says, uh, choose one option from the following 
and there are four options A, B, C, D, let's say spring, summer, autumn and winter and let's say the answer is winter so you don't write winter in the answer you it, the question says choose one option so you the answer will be option number D D is the answer so that was about a gist of what the listening test is about and and certain tips and tricks for that now how to prepare for it firstly what you need to do is you can just go on to um, you know YouTube go on to the internet on YouTube and just try and understand and try and listen to a lot of different accents like English speaking accents for example British accent Australian accent Canadian accent New Zealand accent and American accent that you get a hang of of different kind of accents because these will be used in your recordings just, just practice as there are tons of listening tests available on the internet just go on to them just put your headphones on and just and don't just hear it like that maintain a time limit for yourself of 40 minutes here for recordings do those sample tests there are tons of sample tests available online just do it in a time bound activity in a time bound manner as you would do in the actual test that will help you a great deal because you will because when i said did, when i gave you a trip of doing multitasking you you got to you get used to it the biggest tip for for any exam or for for this exam or any exam is that you need to get accustomed to the pattern of the exam now after the 40 minutes are over for the listening text next next comes your next comes your reading test reading test is for one hour which is 60 minutes and it is divided into three parts in section one there can be two or three short texts section number two there will be two, me two medium length texts and the third will be a really long text now reading section is like we we have all done like a reading comprehension exercise during our school times so reading test is all about that so it tests us on various aspects like what is our knowledge of grammar how are we able to understand the passage and now when you talk about the questions that are there they're very very tricky in reading exam you need to kind of understand the passage very properly the biggest tip for the reading exam is that you just get a hang of the questions first that okay and underline the basic words that let's say if if one question says what does hydrophobia means then just underline hydrophobia and try to look for that term in the passage and then similarly underline the keywords of every question so that you know that this is what is asked in the in the question so i better find out the answers for these and then you when you read the passage so you have to quickly read the passage first you don't have to dwell upon it that okay i have to understand i have to get a deep understanding no you just have to pick the answers so what you can do is just proof reading the entire uh, quickly reading it so that you get a hang of it that what what is it about and what information is where then look at the questions there will be certain questions which you can quickly quickly find out from those keywords then there will be certain questions which will be tricky for that you can just read read the passage again taking into consideration the amount of time that is there now let's see what are the kind of questions that are there there will be multiple choice questions there will be true false not given this is a very very tricky uh, question wherein you have yes no or or maybe a true false and not given so you have to be very clear on that uh, matching certain headings then there will be meeting sentence making sentence endings or maybe summary so there will be already a summary given and you have to say what paragraph so is it paragraph one is it paragraph two or three for which this summary kind of fits into there will be a diagram there can be a short answer question so the crux is that you need look for the answers and not just dwell upon one passage because you you have around five or six passages so you need to manage your time very very effectively and now the biggest tip, tip that i have here is please do not use any information outside the passage for example if it, let's say if a topic comes in the exam on let's say marketing and because I, I am a marketing professional i might know something that has changed or you know maybe in the passage something is given which is outdated so i am not required to provide information which i know it is very very clearly mentioned in the questions that answer the following questions from the information given in the passage 
so any words don't use synonyms unless and until it is written in the question that you write a synonym for this use words from the passage only also you have to be very very sure of the spellings that you are writing and because most of the time the answer will be from the passage so you you need to copy it properly again in the reading section you need to take care of the word limit so the question will state that answer the following question in no more than three words so these are not like the reading passages that we used to do it in our schools where we could write big big stories and everything no the answers will majorly be very very crisp word limit bound and mostly you have to choose the answers from the passage for example if the answer is crocodile and the word crocodile is used in the press passage you need to write crocodile you cannot write alligator if you write alligator your answer will be marked as wrong so my biggest emphasis is on be sure of the word limit be sure of the spellings and use words from the passage and just read the read what read the question very very properly again for reading you need to build up a, an intermediate vocabulary of yours so for that there are tons of uh, oxford dictionary apps which you can download and just make an aim that okay i have to learn 20 words every day so even if you do it for a week you are learning how many 140 words every week so which is a great deal and then you can increase it as per your as per your wish you, you read read a lot read newspapers read articles read magazines read a lot so that you get into into the habit of it and you are able to churn out information just make some summaries for that and also for for the reading again you can go on to the internet and you can you can you know just do those sample test sample reading test for ielts general training test and again do not do that okay you are reading one passage and then you are going out to have a coffee or you are going to have a washroom break don't do that because this is not going to lead you anywhere you whatever you are practicing has to be time bound so then only you will get to the tune of the exam that okay in this much time i have to skip skim the entire passage and write the answers down and then the biggest part is when you mark when you when you are done with the test and you, when you mark see what your mistakes are like when i used to practice my mistakes were that i started using words outside the passage where it was in the question it was clearly written that use words from the passage or i was not following the the word limit because why because i just i didn't even read the question properly so this this happened in my practices and then i knew that i don't have to repeat these mistakes in my final test and that's why i did get a decent score now the mistake that i did in the reading test was was although i did get a golden score but again i could have increased my score better so you don't do that this mistake that's why i'm telling it to you so what i did was i kept the entire long passage for 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 the end that okay let's me let me do these small small passages very quickly and i was so sure so there were 30 questions and i dwelled so much time on them i was and clearly i was so sure sure that all my 30 answers were right and then once i was done with the 30 questions when i moved on to the last passage so i thought i only had 10 when i saw the time i only had 10 minutes and it was such a tough passage that you know i had to literally guess certain answers in the end so what happened was that out of 40 questions 30 sure shot were correct but in those 10 i could have scored better had i managed my time better so time management is the key so that so that so that means you don't need to dwell yourself on to a particular passage just 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 manage your time that okay this is the time that i'm going to give the, give it to this passage and then move on so now let's move on to writing writing section is also for 60 minutes and there are two parts to it one is a letter that you have to write it can be a profe- uh, it can be a formal or informal and number second is an essay or or a long answer question when you talk about writing it comparatively as per my experience is slightly tougher to get get good marks in writing number one because it is so subjective in listening and reading you know if you have ticked let's say option number c that is the answer you're going to get full marks but writing is it gets really it it gets a little tricky to kind of uh, make the examiner happy and i do have a good level of vocabulary still so 
uh, as per my experience, what are the tips for this is like because the first part you have to write a letter. So just uh, see, just go through a lot of letters on the internet, the format of the letters that okay, this is how it is written because you would know we, we did we've done that in our schooling that there are marks for even the format. So see and and what is the kind of language that is used in a in a formal letter or an informal letter. So so read a lot, read a lot of letters. Just type on Google that uh, writing let writing samples on general training test IELTS. Then you you will get a lot of samples and and just read them and just see how they have written it. And and when you practice on your own for on certain topics, just just try and stick to those formats and and write on those lines. Now, why a lot of marks get deducted in in writing is because maybe you are writing under the word limit. For example, if the, if let's say the first part says, the first part of the test says you have to give your answer in 150 words. And if you're writing, let's say 100 words or 120 words, your marks will be deducted because 150, you can write 160 or 170, but not 140. So you have to stick to the word limit. Number second is spelling errors. That is such a huge turn off for an examiner. I am a marketing instructor myself and it is such a turn off for an examiner when they see spelling errors that turns the examiner off totally. So be very sure of the spelling errors. Thing, do not go off topic. If the, if the question is answered, you know, just stick to what the question is asking you to. Do not go off topic just to increase the length. So the examiner would know that you're trying to just fill up the word limit and you don't have any content. So, uh, so in the writing, you are, you're given marks on, on the idea that you have that, okay, f f let's say the question is that you have to write a letter to the government that during the rainy season, our uh, city gets, city gets clogged up. There's not, not a proper drainage system here. And what are your suggestions? So you need to kind of, so the examiner will see what are the ideas that you have. Then you have, uh, you have your marks for coherence and cohesion. That basically means how you are joining your ideas, how you are making it look like a, like one letter. And then lexical uh, resource means what is your natural language pro progression, basically your vocabulary, and of course your grammar. So what you have to practice in this? Number one, you have to see all the letter formats. Number two. What you have to see is when you are writing an essay or in the final exam or when you are doing practice, you have to kind of structure your article, even your letter or your essay that okay and make a rough draft. You will get, you know, make a rough draft that okay, this is going to be my starting, this is going to be my main content, this is how I'm going to end my essay. So you, you need to have certain points in that in your draft, do not put bullets or pointers in your actual answer. Your marks will get deducted because the examiner wants to know a detailed version of how you are expressing. That that only he'll be then only he'll be able to judge you on your language skills. So do not give pointers in the final answer, and use good vocabulary. Stick to the word limit. For example, if your vocabulary is good, if you are learning certain new words every day. For example. Uh, so if, if you are working on your vocabulary, let's say a person is writing that in, in his essay, let's say a word is that the food critic was so and so. Whereas if you know, if your vocabulary is good, you know that a food critic is also called as a connoisseur. So if you write the connoisseur was so and so, so the examiner of course gets impressed with you that he sees that this is the kind of vocabulary you have. So just work on your vocabulary and spellings as well. Now the last part uh, of the exam which is speaking. So it it happens on a different day and it is only for 11 to 15 minutes. It is a very very general chat that you have with the person but you don't have to be like very friendly. It is like a semi-formal setting, formal or a semi-formal setting. Firstly please 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 dress well, look formal look that you are interested in in the exam look that you are serious about it so there will be basically three sections to it one is a general question on what is your name what do you want to do you know something about yourself like an introduction which is for four to five minutes and then a, the, an examiner will give you a topic and a rough paper and a pencil so you can make notes on it 
and then the examiner will ask you to speak on it for two to three minutes once you've spoken about it for two minutes then the examiner will dwell upon that particular topic and speak to you at length for around five minutes a lot of things that the examiner will judge on you is your pronunciation your grammar so these are the things that you need so the way to prepare for it is again listen to a lot of there are a lot of speaking tests available on youtube where you can see what how the speaking tests happen and then also practice in front of the mirror give a basic introduction be pleasant look relaxed dress well also don't get in a, into a hurry now certain basic tips that we all do are number one is we use a lot of you know i was like you don't use them because this is not a friendly chat chat that you are having someone is judging you on your skills and the biggest tip for your speaking test is be confident and you can be conf and you can only be confident if you're sure that you have practiced a lot so practice in front of the mirror listen to a lot of speaking tests just practice that okay take pick up a topic and kind of record yourself so then you can see your recording later and you can see what what are the improvements that you can do and listen to a, a lot of uh, recordings on the internet as well so that was the end of this very very long video and a very important topic which all my known people and my friends have been wanting to know from me so there you go and to sum it up basically what you need to do for IELTS is you need to work on your vocabulary work on your spellings uh, work on your uh, reading skills work on your listening skills as in listen to a variety of accents over the internet and the biggest thing is when you whenever you are giving your exam whenever you are giving your practice tests please do it in a time bound activity and do not take breaks because you the biggest tip for cracking the IELTS exam is that you need to get accustomed to the to the style of the exam you know the time bound activity of the exam and then you will kind of sail through so that was about the exam and I'm sure you're able to achieve the golden score like me and I know uh, the also the British Council at a lot of countries is, is not conducting the exam right now because of COVID so you can use this time to to prepare yourself so that whenever you you have uh, the uh, you know the exam options open you can just you, 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 can, you don't have to waste any time further use this time to prepare for it and I'm sure you're going to crack that uh, golden score and live your Canadian dream so if you like this video do give me a thumbs up and let me know in case you want me to tell you more about life in Canada how we moved here and everything so looking forward to your uh, reviews and looking forward to uh, a lot of you crack your IELTS exam and be here and live your Canadian dream until then stay safe practice social distancing take care bye bye